I want to talk about something that I think you should avoid in the raw food movement. And if on this channel I talk about raw, the raw vegan diet, and hopefully the ideal way of getting healthier as a human being on a raw vegan diet for optimal health and vitality and uh, all that kind of stuff. So we're talking about that. Oh, I'm getting a lot of messages all of a sudden. Sorry. Something I think you ought to be cautious of is anyone that's giving you advice on an idea that along with eating a raw vegan diet that you need either supplements or, or herbs. I think you should be really cautious of that kind of advice. Unless you've been specifically diagnosed with a particular condition to which it's beneficial for you to have a supplement, supplements are never um, are never a benefit. And this is not my crazy idea. This is the this is basically the the, the mainstream scientific idea. And um, you know, you could say to me, well. Uh, uh, well the mainstream isn't right I, I get that but there's money to be made out of supplements and why wouldn't the pharmaceutical companies and why wouldn't like the traditional medical industry take advantage of that if they could if it was right but there's actually no real uh, solid evidence around supplements working and there's some evidence showing that supplements actually for, um, have a, a problematic effect right so the same with herbs now you would be much better off taking a supplement or something like that of that nature than a herb um, herbs obviously are the kind of natural medicinal equivalent of taking a supplement and and people think herbs have a kind of a some kind of I guess medical impact but once again, herbs haven't really been shown to be something that, that people need. There's, there's obviously a history of herbalism. And um, it's a way of getting a, a, a mixture of nutrients and phytonutrients and different stuff like that. But it's not the best way. And the best way is to get it from our food. And our food is primarily fruits and vegetables, tender leaves, nuts, seeds, and... Um, Maybe in our natural environment, maybe we'd also have had some insects and some raw meat now and again. Uh, if if that was all we could get our hands on to eat. But in terms of the modern world, we've got such an abundance of, of food that we don't really have a requirement for for herbs. Or I, should, I should basically add in and mother's milk for babies, you know, in terms of our diet. So if we're a frugivore, that's a kind of a frugivore diet. Mostly fruit, tender leaves. Do the apes eat um, insects and stuff now and again? And and some of them eat small mammals and stuff? Yeah, they, they do. It's not really a big part of their diet, but, um, but let's not deny that they do that. Do they do that when they have an abundance of fruit? Not really, but fair enough. Um... But a lot of animals are omnivores if they don't have anything else to eat, <laughs> right? So the idea that humans are omnivores, well, um, by culture, maybe right now, but not really by an anatomy. And hopefully we're changing that culture slowly. But herbs, um, a lot of people are bought, bought, buy into the natural thing. Stuff is natural, therefore it's good. Herbs are natural, natural herbs, medicinal herbs. And it all sounds great. And can there be herbs that have a medicinal effect? Yeah, I'm sure there. I'm sure there can. Not, it's not something I've researched very hugely. Um, could a person be deficient in vitamin C and take herbs that are high in vitamin C and that has an impact? Yeah, that probably has an impact. But it's not the best way of getting vitamin C. Now, the thing I really want you to think about with herbs is that most people eat herbs. This is not something that's not in people's diets. People eat loads of herbs. Italian restaurant, herbs. Indian restaurant, herbs. McDonald's even has herbs. Everything's got herbs in it. So if herbs were the answer to your health, 
we wouldn't have a problem with health. That's my kind of argument. It certainly doesn't counteract your diet because it doesn't. It, it obviously doesn't from what we see. And the idea that the herbs that you would buy from a particular healer or website would be better than the other herbs is most likely not correct. And it's more likely um, something that is convenient for them to say for the benefits of their own particular business objectives and not really something that's in alignment really with scientific truth. And there's a, a great opportunity right now for anyone and a growing opportunity to make a business out of selling medicinal herbs. Very big business opportunity. Medicinal herbs and supplements, but they're, they're not effective. So you're selling something that people for some reason want to buy and can be convinced into buying but they don't they're not effective at helping people with their health so it's just a total waste of time i was on the phone one time to a lady who was interested in coming to the uk fruit fest and she mentioned to me that she probably wouldn't be able to afford to come because she was had been diagnosed with cancer and she was working with someone that had been certified by someone that's kind of in the raw vegan movement, sort of. He's not a raw vegan, but for some reason people go and learn from him about being a raw vegan. Some of you know who I'm talking about. Some of you have went to his courses and stuff. He's not a raw vegan, obviously, but people are learning, learning about that from him and his students. And um, she was spending £400 a month or something like that on, on some herbal protocol that was meant to be for her cancer. Um, that is the business model. That's See, people don't get it. When you get involved with people like that, um, who on the outside are very... Um, whatever they are on the outside, is that it's all leading at some point to a diagnosis or something or a prescription of you that you should get these herbal protocols and they're they're making a lot of money out of having people come to them or or their staff or whatever and recommending herbal protocols that are completely useless and i'm talking about totally useless um, apart from the placebo effect. But the placebo effect isn't really worth £400 a month. Um, and you can get the placebo effect by just changing your diet anyway if you've got a good expectation for your diet working. So it's a business. Um, it's a successful business. And as I'm telling you, anyone can start it. You just have to start, you just have to put yourself across as a herbal expert. You just have to pre pretend that you are one. You don't have to actually. You, you think you think that people won't, that people won't believe you or people won't. You know that's not, it's not the way it is. Um. But I I think you should avoid anyone that suggests you need supplements or herbs or anything like that. Anything medicinal. I think you should avoid totally. Um. It's my humble opinion towards you. I've never taken a herb for a medicinal reason. I've never taken a supplement for a medicinal reason as far as I remember uh, or a medical reason and I, when I speak to raw vegans, long term raw vegans I ask them that question quite a lot and I almost never hear any of them talk about supplements. And the ones that do talk about supplements are the ones that still have kind of neurotic connections, uh, neurotic beliefs and fears and worries around their diet. And that means usually they're not fully educated. They don't believe in fruit entirely. They sometimes limit fruit or don't think fruit's good enough or whatever. Um, what else? They're always thinking they're sick. They're always thinking they need th that their diet's the problem, um, and and you know they're not looking at other factors in their life, and they're maybe not working on other things. So, 
people get obsessed with diet they get obsessed with all this stuff and then they get obsessed with supplements and it's not and they go from one to the this is the thing about supplements it never start it never ends it's like oh you need a supplement for this and then you need one for this and then you need one for this and then this one and then this one and that one's good and that one's, isn't that one good and it's like all of a sudden they're taking tons of supplements and supplements are shown to be either not beneficial or actually having a negative benefit a negative non-benefit so beware of that stuff honestly stick to the boring boring thing which is eat more fruits and vegetables eliminate animal products reduce the amount of cooked food you eat go 100% raw if, if you're there um, but definitely make that your goal go towards 100% raw go as much towards fruit as possible and you will experience healing regeneration and detoxification all that stuff that people tell you about you will experience that but in a surefire way over a long period of time comfortably easily and whatever else so uh, the raw vegan diet is definitely transformational so you should try it out if you'd like to learn more about the raw vegan diet check out my book it's called the raw food lifestyle 101 it's a and i'll put a link down below you can check it all out there and um, i appreciate your support if you want to buy the book so thank you very much for watching